Well, ladies and gentlemen, a big warm welcome to everyone here in the room. My name's Gary Pert, and I'll be uh, your host for tonight. I've got to say, um, before we kick off, to say how nice it is to see, I don't think I've been to a Best and Ferris and seen so many kids in the room, and nearly all of them are sitting quietly, which is, uh, I'm not used to that. Normally, I'm trying to eat my breakfast with footies going over my head and hitting me in the back of the head, but... Um, thanks for coming along. Hopefully uh, you enjoy the night. Um, I wanted to start off by welcoming also our supporters and members who will be uh, watching tonight's count um, online. And um, again, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank them for their support for the year. We know it's been a roller coaster. It's been a year that's thrown a lot as us, at us as a, as a footy club and um, that does affect our supporters and members as well, um, and they've been amazing. Our members literally have helped us get through this pandemic year, and um, I, I want to thank them all for that. And for everyone in the room, um, as we've talked about before, this is 11 weeks now, and uh, there's, a, there's a story behind every single person in the room here uprooting their lives, first going to Sydney and then to Queensland, all to support our player group so that uh, the Melbourne Football Club can be represented in an AFL competition that we've uh, like no other in the history of the game. And to be quite honest, let's hope we don't experience that again. But I did sincerely want to thank everyone in the room in the roles that they've played. And we couldn't have got to this point. Even getting through this season was a mini win for us as a club and every other club and it took every single person in the room. So, um, like I said, big thank you, and uh, we've tried as hard as possible to make it an experience that you've enjoyed. Um, I've seen the relationship building and the, the connection. It, it literally has been like the big Melbourne family for the last 11 weeks, so thanks to everyone. Um, also, I'd like to thank Zurich Insurance and, and Jaguar, who are our major sponsors great supporters of the club. They give us a real financial stability, the fact that they keep on backing us in. Both have re-signed for next year and we thank them for that. But to all our corporate partners, our player sponsors, um, they're critically important to this club. And at a time uh, when everything was being thrown at us, they've, they've all stuck strong and um, been great support to the club. To 78 Degrees Gin, a new sponsor, who are our broadcast partner tonight. Um, again, thanks for their support, and we hope it's a um, very much a long-term partnership. So um, thank, thanks for jumping on board and allowing us to broad this, broadcast this to our supporters and members. Um, as we would all know, we're not, uh, we're not sitting at the MCG in Melbourne. We're up here in Queensland. And as a result of that, I'd like you to look at the screen now and watch a video of our Welcome to Country. Wanya, Wanya Nalam, Wanya Nalam Jalango, Ko Kabi Kabi Yamanja, Wilnyan Brent Miller, Garing Nuname, Kaimang Moranga Jagangunga, Yongu, Yarin 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 Yarangan, Gavanjalam Galangon Yen. Hello. What I just said was uh, basically just a long way of saying good day, but it's done in the language from this area here. And the language that we're talking about today is known today as Gabi Gabi or Kabi Kabi, which simply means that we are the people who use that word Gabi or Kabi to say the word no. But what I did in that introduction was Wanya, or Wanya Nalam, means a welcome to everybody. Gu Kabi Kabi Yamanja, to the land of the Gabi Gabi speaking people. And Garing Nina Nami Gai Mang Murangai Jagangungan Yongo simply means that I've lived here, I've walked this land, this is a country where I hunt for my food and also bring it back to my home. But Kavanjalam Galangon Yen means to everybody here, thank you very much. Where we are in this country here, it's actually a very special one to me. Um, in that Twin Waters area, where a lot of my family actually grew up in this country. Um, next to Twin Waters is that Maruchi River. And Maruchi River, well, talks about Murukuchi. And Murukuchi or Muruuchi simply means the place of the red nose or the red beak, which is actually the country of that black swan. All through that area, you actually got special areas, but it was the main feeding ground for us mob around these areas too. But where I was born, I was born in the country of the red flowering paper bark tree. And we call this number. Nambo is its name today. My grandmother's country comes from the place of the hairpin honeysuckle tree, what we call Batarum, or Badrum as it's known today. 
and grandfather's country always talking about Mulu, the red-bellied black snake, or what we know as Mululaba today. See, in our country here, I tell people, you live here and you walk this land, we all still speak that language and sing the names of our towns. To understand the names of our towns is actually to start to understand our country. Where all around here, our plants are connected to our animals. Plants and animals then connected to Ja, our country, to Gung our water and to Nyai ourselves as well. But it's up to us to take that time to see that relationship that the environment has, most importantly, the, uh, the relationship that we have with our environment. Say, for example, some places here like Majimba talks about Midjim. It also talks about women's place too. But when that midgem berry, that midgem tree starts to fruit, it's telling us that the spotted crab is actually ready to harvest as well. See, they share the same name because they're connected in that dreaming. We have many of these connections around here. We finished the season of Jullara, or Jullra, which is the diamond scale sea mullet migration. When that season's in effect, it actually tells us um, by our plants. So we watch the red stringy bark, the outer bark starts to fall off, telling us get our spears and nets, our gumbas, our canoes ready, travel along the rivers to the coastal areas. When we're walking along them coastal areas, you listen and you watch. The blue mountain parrot will actually make their migratory path into this country here, telling us that the fish are here. You listen to the, well, listen to the rainbow lorikeets in the afternoon, making a big old noise up in the trees, telling us there's fish in that gung in that water. We go to the water's edge and we sit and wait and watch them schools come in. So much in numbers, that it discoloured the water, turned it all black. But we wait for our signs too. Gunga, the white-chested seagull, tells us when we can hunt, but most importantly shows us where we should hunt. And always remembering too, at the end, always giving our fair share back and say thank you very much for our feast around here. So we have many of these connections in this country. And to me, this is what a welcome to country is all about. It's basically just an introduction into country. When I go to other people's countries, other countries around, I always want to know about their stories, who they are and their mob too. So in return, this is what I love to give too. So on behalf of my family, I'd like to say thank you very much for well, listening to me yarn too. But I want to finish off too by playing that musical instrument that didgeridoo. But most importantly, paying my respects to the traditional custodians of this instrument. For countless generations, they were the caretakers, they were the law for that instrument. Without them, being those custodians, like all mob around here, like my family have been for countless generations, it wouldn't exist and only be a hollow bit of wood. But I'd like to finish off by playing this one for you right now. Thank you. What an amazing welcome to uh, country. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed that. Now, before we start with the, uh, the count, I just want to take a second to um, acknowledge the fact that we fell short this year. I know we had very clearly the ambitions of getting back into the finals. We didn't get there and getting close uh, means that we're a long way off. 
terms of the work that we need to do, the way we need to approach the pre-season, but I have no doubt, based on the conversations we've had over the last couple of days, that all it's going to do is make us hungrier and make sure that we're back in the finals next year. But there's going to be plenty of time for those conversations, plenty of time for the hard work to set ourselves up for next year, because tonight is about the players. This is about celebrating the performances of the great young athletes that represent us every time they put on the jumper and run out onto the ground. So before we go into any other details, let's get on with it. I'd like to introduce the chairman of the Melbourne Football Club now, just to start proceedings, Glenn Bartlett. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Lloyd Trusker Best and Ferris Awards for season 2020. And for all of those in the harbour, the Sunshine Coast, um, welcome. This is really a night for you know, the players and the whole group there to reflect uh, and celebrate some significant achievements through season 2020. So whether you are anywhere in Australia or the world, from the Sunshine Coast, um, in Melbourne, Victoria, we welcome you to the 2020 Awards. I'd like to welcome all members, supporters, special guests, players, partners, children, players, families, host families, and acknowledge the support and a big shout out to all of you that are in the hub um, celebrating uh, season 2020 and the individual awards. And also a special shout out to all those families who could not join their loved ones in the hub who stayed in uh, Melbourne or uh, otherwise around the country. Um, I'd like to particularly acknowledge the foundation heroes our Coterians in a sanctum for their continued wonderful support through a difficult year in 2020. And also all of our past players, past coaches, the Demon Army who must have been frustrated not being able to be behind the goals in 2020. And we certainly miss them through 2020. And thank all of our volunteers starting um, with our board, of course, who I'll come back to. So once again, acknowledge uh, all of you joining us from the Sunshine Hub and from whatever, from whatever streaming platforms you are around the country, and a particular welcome to all of our members. I'd like to acknowledge all of our commercial partners, and in particular to Zurich and Jaguar, who have extended their partnership. Again, we look forward to um, you know, sustaining our partnership and our shared vision um, of success into the future. And a special thank you to Gary Pert and George DeCrippen and the commercial team for the work that they've done through season 2020. A big welcome to all the players tonight and your families and those who are with you in the hub and our players, men and women um, around the country who are in Melbourne. To our players in the hub, it's really your night tonight. What a season, what a year 2020 has proven to be. I'd like to congratulate all of the award winners in advance um, but just remind everyone, it's really about team success that we crave. And at the start of the year, you know, achieving that success together is, is what we're all about. But at the start of the year, I see our Gary Pert, myself and the board stood in front of our members and laid out the club purpose and values and our vision, our purpose of being proud to belong. And our club values of true trust, respect, unity and excellence. And of course, the vision included um, playing finals every year for the next four years and delivering uh, in our AFLW program, men's program, at least one premiership in that time frame. And we don't shy away, you know, from that vision and those goals. And to start off, I just want to acknowledge our AFLW team who made their first finals appearance in March this year. Great comeback against the Giants, which put them into a primary final. Unfortunately, the season due to COVID-19 was called off. Um, but, um, you know, to Daisy Pearce and the whole team mixed in here, the coaches that achieved, you know, finals this year and a win, well done. Um, obviously to our, our men's team, it's been a, a really challenging year for our players, our coaches, our fitness staff, doctors, physios. They've really packed their bags and traveled all over the, country from starting in Perth to, you know, to Sydney, um, to Adelaide, you know, a couple of games in Cairns, Brisbane, Gold Coast, and of course, our Indigenous game, celebration game in Alice Springs with a great win against St Kilda. 
um, at the outset. We didn't set out what we achieved to set out. And I know we're all stinging. I'm certainly stinging in terms of to just fall short and finish ninth is, is not um, what we set out to achieve. And we'll be working tirelessly um, to, to deliver what we're capable of, which is far better than, than, than ninth in our view. So looking ahead, um, as I said, I wanted to make sure we celebrate the individual achievements of a number of players and, and let's not forget the sacrifices and what the players have put into the game and particularly this year, which has been, you know, we've had to be agile. Um, they haven't complained. They've got on with the job. And it's been an incredibly um, challenging year. Um, you know, I think the coaches, I think Darren Burgess with the short turnarounds has done an unbelievable job uh, in, in preparing our team for what's been a really challenging year. To the players, staff, coaches, you know, it's been a very difficult year and the human cost has been the hardest thing to deal with. I just reach out to thank all of the players, staff, coaches that have left or will leave the club. Thank you so much for your sacrifice, for putting your body on the line for what you've put in our football club. We hope um, you form some lifelong friendships and we hope the experience, you know, really helps you and whatever you choose to do in the future. To my board uh, who have provided thousands of hours of support, you know, from when we sort of went into crisis mode in, in March, we really had to step up, you know, across the club and um, to my vice chairs, uh, you know, for the guidance, stability, governance and the work they've done, Vice Chairs Mohan Jesse Dace and, and Kate Roffey, thank you so much. To David, Rob, John Trotter, Steve Morris and David Turin as well, thanks so much for your support and contribution and to your families as well that um, have supported you volunteering so much time to this great club. To our CEO, Gary Pert and our exec, you know, it's been a challenging year. You got on the front foot, all of our leaders and offered up you know, significant pay cuts and have really done more for less through 2020. So thank you for everything that you've done. I want to also acknowledge, um, you know, our relationship with the MCC. You know, we go back to 1858. We're still the football section of the biggest sporting club in the world, the MCC, and proud to be part of the MCC and proud to work on projects together. So the Santa Teresa project, delivering a real outcome in Santa Teresa with the MCG in the desert is something everyone should be proud to belong to. And I just want to thank uh, their president, Michael Happel, and Stuart Fox, CEO, for the work that they do together with us and for their continued support. And we look forward to working with them going forward. Enjoy the best and fairest. Um, what I'd say to, to you know, all of our people and our members is I hope that um, there was some plenty of entertainment, difficult times provided you know, through the year. And there's some certainly some great wins and great highlights. And there were some really disappointing, you know, frustrating losses. And I can feel the frustration at times. You know, I've got frustrated at times. But I can assure you that when the dust settles, um, we'll be back tomorrow, you know, driving our pursuit of excellence, driving our club values and our club purpose, being proud to belong harder than ever. We're going to approach 2021 like there is no tomorrow, but for now, it's the players' night, it's the footy department. So from Josh, Goody, all the coaches and players, families in the hub, you know, please celebrate the individual achievements tonight. Please reflect on the season and then let's draw a line in the sand and focus on 2021. Yeah, please enjoy this evening. You know, thanks for everything you've done. And uh, of course, go Dees. Great. Thanks, Glenn. And uh, I'm sure he'd love to be here with us tonight. Um, now, during the year, several of our players played in milestone games. They didn't get the chance to run out onto the MCG in front of the uh, Demon Faithful. So we wanted to acknowledge them tonight. And if I could just ask, we'll put our hands together at the end of it, just as I go through the players. But to Neville Jetter, 150 games. Michael Hibbard, 150 games. Adam Tomlinson, 150 games. Harmsey, 100 games. Christian Salem, 100. Christian Petrarca, 100. And Bailey Fritz and Mitch Hannon, 50. So congratulations to all those players. If you could put your hands together. Well done to those guys. Now, the Melbourne Footy Club's all about its history and its people. And that's why it's with a heavy heart that we honour life members that passed away during the year. So to 
Tony Anderson, Tony Bull, Graham Simpson, Mike Costas, along with past Bay Graham Watson's families. Our deepest sympathies are offered to the families of those great Melbourne people. But now it's time to start the best and fairest count. So I'd ask you now to look to the screen as we recap on rounds one to six. A trip west to kick off 2020 and for first gamers Pickett and Bedford, a dream realised. Bedford the turn and he yes. can link up with Pickett. There you go. That's something you look forward to, Dees. Viney was at his bullish best, while Langdon's debut in red and blue was encouraging. The Demons beaten by 27 points, the season halted due to the COVID pandemic. Almost three months on, it was finally back to business. Melbourne shooting out of the blocks against Carlton at Marvel Stadium. There was a point to prove, and while five goals to nil in the first quarter set the tone, the Demons were forced to weather a late charge. Petrarca and Gorn among the best in the one-point win. After an unexpected bye in round three, the Demons finally got the chance to reacquaint themselves with the G. Geelong bolting to an early lead, but little by little, Melbourne started to wear them down. Back to Brayshaw, needs a clean pick up, got it, run into an open goal. Melbourne are in it, Melbourne are in it, they're within four points. Brayshaw booted two important goals, Gorn and Oliver also fighting tooth and nail as the Ds fell agonisingly short. A tough assignment loomed next up against the Premiers, the skipper toiling hard while Hibbard provided immense dash in a contest that at times got willing. Hannon helping the Demons make a charge in a tense final term before the experienced Tigers steadied. Having farewelled Victoria, it was into the Sydney hub for Melbourne. Crunch time had arrived and against the Suns, the response was big. In the middle and around goals, Petrarca was a man on a mission. Salem, Viney and Gorn also stepping up in a much needed victory. And for Bennell, a moment he'd longed for. And now he has. So they can celebrate so many things. Victory for the Ds. It's a pile on on the outer side. Well, an up and down start to the year. Christian Petrarca gets an early lead, but Jack Viney, Max Gorn, hot on his uh, heels. Clary, Ed Langdon, Steve May, right in the mix. So let's see how those votes go a little bit later on into the night. But now I would ask Max Gorn to come to the stage to present the James McDonald Trophy. Uh, yeah, the James McDonald Trophy, uh, named after a former skipper of the club. Um, this player who wins this award is purely voted by the players. Um, and uh, this particular player, devotion to the team, care for his teammates, um, he sacrifices himself for the greater of the team, uh, speaks up in meetings, speaks up on and off the field. Um, he was a clear runaway winner, especially with his last month, is Stephen May. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, I didn't even know about this award, to be honest. Um, so <laughs> I'm, re I'm really stoked to win it. Um, you know, it, it does encapsulate, you know, why I play the game, and, and that's to play a role for the team, and, and that, that's all I that's all I ask for myself and all I ask for my teammates. So um, to be rewarded with with this, you know, showing that as Gorney said, I, I won it more weeks than not. Um, you know, I'm very proud of that. But ultimately, I'm proud of um, you know being out and running out with all you boys every week and. And um, yeah, thanks for voting for me. I really appreciate it. Well done, Maisie. Um, so during the year, we were so proud to watch our AFL W team. For those that watched the team closely, they had such a good year, even they had so many injuries, made the finals for the first time and were real um, a, a very good chance to actually go through and win the Premiership until the AFL stopped the AFL 
FFW competition because of the pandemic. But we were so proud of the team and very excited about the possibilities for next year. So let's have a listen to the head coach, Mick Stanier. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say thank you to all the staff, players and their families who have made sacrifices this season to ensure the future of our game. And also thank you to the players and staff who have, who have been on the road and in the hub, uh, who have brought entertainment into our lounge rooms and a lot of joy with some of the great wins this season in what's been a, a difficult time back in Victoria. Uh, our women's season unfortunately ended early at the hands of the pandemic, but uh, not before our girls were able to win, play in and win their first final um, in dramatic fashion as well. So to finish top four, um, with the season ending early is a great achievement and what really excites me is the resilience and spirit shown from all the girls in, in what was a really challenging year with a, a number of injuries and, and obstacles to overcome and I've got no doubt that it'll make us a stronger team for the 2021 season and beyond. Uh, recently, back in August, we had our sign and trade period um, so the club was able to secure our core group and also improve our draft hand. So Todd Patterson did a great job during that period and now with the draft only two weeks away, we look forward to bringing in some exciting young talent uh, to add to our existing group and assist them with their aspirations to play in more finals and ultimately bring uh, the first AFLW Premiership home to the club. Uh, it's been a tough off season for our, our women's team. But, uh, they've remained connected uh, they're healthy and now certainly hungry to, uh, to get into footy, which is something they've been, been starved of over the last couple of months. So hopefully it's not too far away before we can get the group together, but uh, they'll certainly be raring to go for our 2021 campaign. Uh, all the best to the award winners tonight. Um, yeah, I hope, hope you enjoy the night and certainly thanks again for uh, all your efforts throughout this season. It's been much appreciated back home. Thanks, uh, Mick. One of the great young leaders of the club and doing a great job with the AFLW team. Our next award now is our Club Leadership Award, the Ron Barassi Junior Trophy. And again, if I could just ask you to look at the video as Jim Plunkett announces the winner. Thanks, Purdy. I'm honoured tonight to present the Ron Barassi Junior Leadership Award for season 2020. This award is based on the following criteria of character, behaviour, actions and accountability. This year's winner is a genuine leader within our playing group. He continues to model and drive the standards across the team and will always put the interests of the team ahead of his own. He's a leader both on and off the field and he's demonstrated this for many, many years. I've had the opportunity to work closely with this player throughout the year and he has continued to grow and develop in his leadership. It gives me great pleasure to announce the winner of the Rumbarassi Junior Leadership Award for season 2020 is Jack Viney. Uh, thanks, Plunk. Um, shame we couldn't be here, mate. Um, but, uh, you know, really appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, it's been a been a big sacrifice from all the boys um, to be here but I think an even bigger sacrifice for the staff um, so I really just want to take the opportunity to thank the staff um, you know you guys have been away from your families uh, as well and um, you guys put in so much work and effort to get us to perform so um, I just want to shout out to the staff thanks thanks Jack um, so let's keep the count moving and let's now have a look at rounds 7 to 12. Back at Giant Stadium, there was much to like as the Demons tackled the Hawks, a four-goal second term setting up a 43-point win. Petrarca's purple patch continued with 29 touches. Pickett again looked lively while Gorn torched McAvoy. Melbourne putting Hawthorne to the sword in what was a complete performance. Tight and tough clash with the Lions tested all of Melbourne's fighting qualities and although down by three goals at three-quarter time, it was game on during a nerve-wracking final term. The dying stages produced plenty of drama but unfortunately not the result the Demons wanted. 
Viney and Petrarca never gave up, while Hibbard was also impressive in the four-point loss. The informed power led from start to finish on a dismal night at the Gabba, and had it not been for May, things could have been a lot worse. The defender with 17 touches and throwing himself at every contest in a typically gritty performance. A trip to the Adelaide Oval gave Melbourne a chance to regroup, and that's exactly what they did. Breaks one tackle around the body. This will bounce. Good play. Oh, it almost could play. Viney, too strong, too good. While the Crows proved stubborn, they could do little to stop the late Demon onslaught. Oliver chalked up 21 contested possessions and laid six tackles. Viney was equally determined, while May was again terrific, also in the best. A chance to go back to back in round 11 and with the season on the line, the Demons relished the occasion. Utterly dominant after half time, there was plenty to like about the North Melbourne victory. Hall, but instead it was Petrarca, Oliver tucked it under the arm and now it's Petrarca on the full storm, the full long bomb right to the edge, was it a push? Oh it's not, it's a goal! A much needed percentage booster and for the likes of Oliver, Petrarca and Brayshaw, Another big tick, Wiedemann and Fritsch finishing with two goals. The old enemy was next at the Gabba as opposed to the G. Regardless, there was a desperation to get the four points. Bodies on the line, the Demons hit the scoreboard in a blistering second quarter. Spargo bobbed up not once but twice, while Langdon's dash provided his teammates with plenty of ammunition. May and Brayshaw also impressive in the 56-point win. So Christian Petrarca still out in the front but looking very nervous in the front table here as Jack Viney, Clayton Oliver and Steve May just keep on piling on votes and just won't go away. So we'll come back to that vote but uh, Track, you're going to have to sweat it out a little bit longer um, because our next award is the Ian Ridley Memorial Trophy, which is our Club Ambassador Award. And I'd now like to welcome up to the stage, if you put your hands together, for Shannon Burns. Thanks, Bertie. Um, living out a small dream at the moment. I uh, know a few of you in the audience probably have those nights where you don't want to go to the, to the awards nights and get all dressed up. and. Uh, tonight's a night for that, isn't it? We're all comfortable. I'm in my uh, comfortable, affordable and stylish New Balance shoes. That's New Balance shoes. And uh, we're in our dining room. Um, I can see the toasty machine over there that uh, my son made famous. And um, yeah, feeling really comfortable in awards night's a, a little different feeling and uh, I appreciate you giving me that opportunity, Purdy. Um, where was I? <laughs> giving an award. Yeah, okay, sorry, I digress. Um, the Ian Ridley Memorial Trophy is one that holds great significance to our club. Uh, we all understand the impact that we can have as footballers on the wider community and we can set the right example. We can inspire others and we can initiate change. The winner of this award has done just that all throughout his career. Neville Jetta is the epitome of what this trophy represents. In a year that has provided so many challenges, he has continued to embrace the responsibility that's placed on him as an AFL footballer and has again been a proud leader in the Indigenous space. His work to fight against racism is a fitting example of this. This year Neville has led the charge in the club's involvement in the Free the Flag campaign. He has stood up for himself, his family and his culture when targeted online and he has reinforced to everyone their ability to have impact on stamping out racism in our society. It is his passion, commitment and ability to connect with others that holds such value. In addition to this, we all had the honour of learning a bit more about one of our own this year. In designing the 2020 Indigenous Guernsey, Neville was able to share his story and culture and educate us all throughout uh, through his artwork. His design told the story of connection as Neville said himself, it represented having an understanding of who we are, where we are from and where we are going. For the boys to be able to pull this jumper on twice this year in the Sir Dud Nichols round in Alice Springs was something that everyone 
at the football club was really proud of. It is my honour to present the 2020 Ian Ridley Memorial Trophy to an inspiring person not only for this club but for the game, Neville Jetta. Thanks, Randy. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone here today for your continued support throughout everything that we do within the football club. Um, without you guys listening, getting a greater understanding and wanting to learn, um, these things can't be done, can't be changed. Um, so thank you guys first and foremost, um, but then also, also thank you for each and every one of you this year um, for the help you've done behind the scenes, um, coaches, staff uh, and families as well, so especially to my family for, for coming up and supporting me. Thank you. What a great ambassador for our club. A man that's helped shape this club over the last 10 years, so well done, Nev. Um, the next award now is the Harold Ball Memorial Trophy. This is arguably one of the most important awards that we give out as a club because it's for the best young player, the players coming through the system that are gonna be the future of this club. And so I would ask now for Matty Egan to come up and give this award. Uh, the Harold Bourne Memorial Trophy is for the best young player uh, and there's obviously a huge amount of talent coming through uh, so this is really tight this year. This player has grown so much as a player uh, but it also has grown so much as a man. He works incredibly hard with his ruck coach staff and his line coach Justin Platt, deserved winner Luke Dogger Jackson. Thanks to the coaches for giving me an opportunity to play this year um, and to all the boys for making me feel really welcoming coming in, um, pretty much like brothers to me now. So, yeah, it's been a good year and hopefully go better next year. Cheers. Thanks, Jacko. And something tells me that's not going to be the last award that he wins in his career at the Melbourne Football Club, but uh, well done, mate. Um, now, we're getting to the point where our last award now, which is the Coach's Trophy, the Norm Smith Memorial Trophy, and I'd like to now welcome to the stage Alan Richardson to award that. Richo. So... Um Coaches, not unlike uh, Gorney went through with the players, the coaches vote on this award. So is the player that displays elite work ethic and unquestioned commitment to his preparation and on game day provides the team with consistent high level of performance. Um, obviously, I'm new to the footy club. My observations of this person from afar was I knew how good a, good a player he was. I knew the impact that he had on a game of footy with his own performance. I didn't quite know how he went in terms of the influence that he had on others, it's already been mentioned by Gorney. He's, uh, he's an outstanding teammate. He's got a great balance of challenge and care for his teammates. He is as committed as anyone to make sure that we become an incredibly successful football club. The winner of the Norm Smith Memorial Trophy is Stephen May. Thanks everyone. Um, yeah, pretty um, humbled actually to to win this award. It's um, you know it's a challenge that I've had you know in the last few years of my career. Um, you know, being able to prep my body to perform the best of my ability every week, and you know this is the first season of my career that I've played every game. So um, you know I feel like I've turned a corner. Not only I just want to thank the coaches and the, in particular the fitness staff, and you know Beck riding me hard with my skinnies, getting me down like all that sort. You know, it's been, a, it's been a lot of help and um, on the back of that, it's just given myself a lot of confidence to perform week in, week out and not have to worry about injuries again. So, um, yeah, thanks for the award coaches and, um, yeah, everyone have a good day. Well done, Maisie. See, that's the thing, if you have a good year, you've got to have multiple speeches ready. Um, so, let's find out 
who wins the Melbourne Football Club best and fairest. So now if you can look at the screen and let's see rounds 13 to 18. There was a roadblock in round 13 and it came in the form of the Bulldogs. The signs were promising early, the Demons with a slight lead at the main break, but our winning run would come to an end. May was clearly the best in red and blue, having kept Norton quiet. A trip to the Alice next for Melbourne and a must-win fixture with the Saints. Wiedemann gave the Ds a hot start, but the sapping conditions made for a close finish. Enter Petrarca and a Sharon that bounced beautifully as the match was up for grabs. 1v3 inside 50, what can Petrarca do? The snap from Christian Petrarca is bouncing, oh. it's gone through! That is unbelievable! A frantic finish, but thankfully one that went our way. Langdon and May joining Petrarca in the best. An unpredictable season saw the Demons travel to Cairns for a battle with the Swans. A howling wind coupled with a slippery footy making things difficult, scoring especially. Harms provided some hope with a tidy goal, but this would prove an opportunity missed. Langdon, Tomlinson and Gorn the shining lights. Kazali Stadium turned in another wild night in an almost carbon copy of the week before. Goals were difficult to come by, although the likes of Oliver, Petrarca, Viney and Fritsch never gave up the fight in a 14-point loss. Under lights at the Gabba, Baker set the tone with a crafty goal from the boundary line. And when Spargo got on the end of one, the Ds were on a roll. Vandenberg will give it back to him. Thumping handball for Wiedemann. Just got to think his way through and here comes Spargo. If the bounce works, he can straighten up and kick a goal. And that's exactly what he does. The Giants did rally and had it not been for May, could have done more damage on the scoreboard. It made for a tense final quarter. Melbourne digging in with Rivers producing the winner. Fritsch, Shaw with the big fist. Rivers on the left. Rivers on the left. That's unbelievable. One last roll of the dice for Melbourne against the Bombers and a five goal blitz in the second term made for entertaining viewing. Gorn provided silver service to the midfield and Petrarca, Oliver and Viney made it count. There'd be one last Bomber blitz in the final term before Fritsch sealed victory. Oh, by those highlights, this could go any way. So uh, now I would like to invite to the stage to announce our top five winners, senior coach Simon Goodwin. Yeah, thanks, Petty. Um, yeah, obviously, before I start, what I would like to do, it's a, it's a really tough time of year, and I want to acknowledge um, Josh and Corey Wagner and Cole Dunkley, um, who are leaving our club today for the contribution you've made. Um, you've been great teammates, you've given it everything, and I know you're all going to pursue further careers, and I wish you the best in all of that pursuit, and uh, I know everyone here does, so give them a round of applause if we can. Um, firstly, I wanted to acknowledge our members and supporters um, who we've missed greatly this year. Without doubt, they're the core essence of our game, and it was missed. The supporters and fans are what drive our game, and although not being able to attend in, attend in person, your presence was certainly felt throughout the year. I'd also like to acknowledge the staff, players, board, for the commitment that you've shown in a very challenging 2020 AFL season. It's fair to say hub life's been all-encompassing, and without doubt we'll look upon this as challenging but also highly rewarding. The benefit of being together for this long will be felt for many years. To the broader football club and football department, I love what you do for this club. The roles you play, the positive energy that you bring, the attitude that you embrace every situation is, is inspiring for everyone to see. And to see the camaraderie, camaraderie you have here is quite inspiring. And I thank you for the support and I thank you for what you've done since being here. To the coaching group, I thank you for the efforts in an, under abnormal conditions. 
We've made significant changes to the elements of our game and are progressing forward again in the way we play. Your loyalty and commitment to the playing group is ev evident for all to see and the support for myself and the club has never wavered. After finishing 7-8th in 2019, our players returned driven to prepare themselves physically and mentally for what the game would demand. We were well prepared. After round one and with the shutdown of the season, COVID provided many challenges in the way we trained and ultimately where we played and how much we travelled. We played two weeks in Sydney, two in Adelaide, one in Alice Springs, two in Cairns. And throughout that, that period, we embraced every challenge as an opportunity. We knew that at times there would be noise about our footy club re-performance, but we stuck to the process, something that I'm very proud of our playing group and our staff as a wider group. We need to be clear. We aimed to play finals in 220 and we fell short and I'm sure that disappoints us all. As a club, we need to take the next step and become a team that elevates ourselves to the top of the ladder, not in the middle, to the top. To make genuine change, we all need to take responsibility, ownership and accountability and increase the standards, discipline and align culture to increase performance. Everyone. Everyone has a role to play. It's time. There's no fluffing around and accepting being close anymore. We will leave no stone unturned in reviewing and building processes in all areas to help our program. There will be clear areas to improve on and new standards set. We'll embrace these and there will be a clear destination in mind for 221. But for 220, I thank everyone for their efforts and, uh, and the challenging times and make sure we enjoy the night. So the award winners that have already been given awards, congratulations and very much deserved every single one of you. I guess it gives me great pleasure to announce the top five for our BNF this year. The Dick Taylor Memorial Trophy for fifth place goes to Clayton Oliver. Thank you very much. A huge honour to win that. Um, yeah, we just keep it pretty short and sharp for my speeches, so I'll put it the same. Uh, first, I just want to thank uh, Soph for being a massive support for me. She always is, and uh, coming up here and coming from Melbourne, so thank you very much. Um, all the boys uh, had a real good year, a bit disappointing. We aren't playing finals, but uh, yeah, hopefully next year. Um, Mum and Dad and my family back home, they're always talking to me and supporting me, so I'd like to thank them as well. Um, obviously, coaches. Goody, Benny, who probably you talk to the most, um, yeah, helped me through the year and yeah, looking after me, appreciate it. And then just uh, physios, I've probably seen them a fair bit in the masseuse, so appreciate for putting up with me. And uh, just la lastly, just the supporters, um, yeah, appreciate all the back home, all the uh, support you give us, and uh, hopefully next year will be a much better year. Okay, fourth place, the Ivor Warren Smith Memorial Trophy. Goes to a guy that's new to our footy club. He's an outstanding impression on our club and he's an outstanding person, Ed Langdon. Yeah, thank you. I'll also uh, try and keep this uh, pretty short. Uh, it's a tremendous honour to win, to win an award up here tonight. I um, certainly didn't expect it, but uh, I'd probably like to start by thanking uh, Goody and Lammy. I know Lammy's not here, but um, for getting me to the club, clearly he believed in what I had to bring, which, um, which I really appreciate, and Goody also for um, allowing me to play my role and, and flourish in an environment um, that allows me to do so, so I thank you for that. 
uh, and the other coaches, Benny in particular. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly had its challenges this year, but um, yeah, I appreciate everything you've done. So I thank you for that. Uh, I should probably thank my family. I know they're, they're not up here, but uh, no doubt mum will be tuning in um, to this at some point. So uh, mum and dad and my sister, I uh, thank you for that. Uh, and then probably um, the players deserve uh, a massive thank you. Um, you know, this environment, it certainly hasn't been easy, but I guess if there's a silver lining, um, I've certainly furthered along a lot of my relationships uh, in the last few months. Um, Tom, I want to shout out, so thanks, mate. Um, no, so it's certainly been a silver lining as I've been able to uh, develop a lot of relationships, which I really appreciate. Um, and then last, thank you just to all the family and staff. Um, it's, it's been great to see all the kids running around and, and all the partners up here. It's certainly made it feel um, such a loving uh, environment and it's made it a lot more enjoyable. So, thank you. OK, third place in the Ron Barassi Senior Memorial Trophy goes to a player that's led the club incredibly well, Jack Viney. Time up, I get up here, I my mind goes blank. Um, but I would firstly like to thank um, both the Wagners and Carl Dunkley for their contribution to the footy club. Um, it's really sad to see you boys go, but uh, I just want to thank you for the relationship you boys have built with us um, over the years and the contribution to the footy club. So thank you very much. Uh, also, congratulations to all the award winners tonight. Um, you know, and congratulations on your stellar seasons. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to all the boys who have been on the fringe um, this year and, and some of the guys who haven't played um, at all. Um, you know, it's been a, a difficult year for everyone, but especially the boys who haven't been able to play, um, you know, quality um, football. Um, you know, I couldn't imagine how, uh, how difficult that's been and the attitude you guys have given the program and the support you guys have given to um, myself and, and the other boys in the team has been unreal. So I just want to give you guys a big pump up and um, really appreciate it. Um, to the supporters um, back home, um, thank you so much. Um, from all reports across AFL, obviously with the, the pandemic, we had a lot of um, AFL-wide, a lot of people um, asking for memberships back, et cetera. But um, from, from the reports Perry's given us, the, the Melbourne faithful have been one of the, um, the most loyal and, and stuck true. So um, that really does mean a lot to the players. So we'd like to thank you guys back home. Um, probably the biggest thank you of all was to my wife, Charlotte. Um, it's been an incredibly difficult year um, and kind of learning how to become parents in uh, this, this environment has been challenging and um, particularly early on there were stages where um, we thought we, we might have to head back home but it's quite incredible uh, how we've made it this long so I'm so proud of you and um, yeah, love you very much. So thanks guys, have a good night. Okay, the Sid Anderson Memorial Trophy for second place getter. In a really tight count goes to Stephen May.
here again, everyone. Um, probably sick of seeing me, but um, nah, and congrats, track. Um, you know, well done, mate. You've had an outstanding year, so um, it's a privilege to, uh, you know, even give it a shake and get close to you. Um, really proud of how you've, the player you've turned into and the person you turn into off field. And um, so yeah, I'd just like to start off just by thanking everyone, all the players and the staff and this whole family hub that we have. Like, um, I come from a big family and been living on my own in the past and. To, to be put into this sort of environment and to have the kids running around, um, you know, it's just, it really is like a breath, breath of fresh air for me. And um, I really do think that's had a big impact on my football and my mental headspace because, um, you know, we have a bad loss and you walk in and little Teddy Melksham's throwing stuff at you and you just get on it, you get over it straight away. So um, um, that has been huge. And um, to the coaches, Goody, um, you know, it's no secret you. You know, I didn't have the best year last year and you, you hit me between the eyes um, with some honest feedback and, um, you know, it was a bit of a father figure. You didn't go soft to me, but you helped me and supported me and, um, you know, all I wanted to do after the club went out and traded and got me, I wanted to pay that back and obviously let everyone down last year. So, just wanted to try and get fit and try and play my role each week. Um, I really, really love to play finals. I'm still pretty shattered, shattered about that, but, you know, we're onwards and upwards, hopefully next year. So. Once again, um, all my teammates, thanks for accepting me. I really feel like I'm a part of the team now. So, um, and uh, yeah, everyone have a good night. Cheers. <laughs> Obviously the winner of the Keith Bluey Truscott Memorial Trophy goes to someone that's matured a lot throughout his career. It hasn't been easy. Um, it's made enormous changes to the way he goes about his footy, his training. His work ethic, his discipline off the field goes to Christian Petrarca. Track. And uh, before you speak, mate, we've got a, a special message from some special people um, on behalf of uh, some people that got some interest in you, mate. We're back here again, mate. Seems like all we do is make uh, videos for the Melbourne Footy Club. Uh, on a serious note, just wanted to say a massive congratulations. Uh, we know how hard you've worked um, to get yourself to this point uh, and you, know, you set yourself to high expectations, so it's a credit to you. We're so incredibly proud of you, Christian. All the efforts that you've put in, you know, pre-season has all paid off. You've played with so much confidence um, and consistency this whole year that this award, we think, is a good recognition of all the work that you've put in. CP5, congratulations on your first BNF, mate. I can see that you're, um, you're still a couple behind me, a few league BNFs, mate. Um, yeah, but anyway, you'll get there, buddy. Um, congratulations, mate. Hope for the best for the rest of you with all Australia and that kind of stuff, mate. Well deserved. Um, can't wait to see you, so because uh, you can fix up my last invoice, mate. Thank you. Hi, Christian. Congratulations on winning the best and fairest. Um, we're so happy for you, um, and I uh, hope you enjoy the night. Um, it's all that hard work that you put in uh, throughout the start of the year, and uh, well deserved. And looking forward to um, having you home soon. Congratulations, Christian. We're really excited for you. Very, very happy for you winning the Keith Bluey Truscott um, Trophy. It's a testament to you as a person for all your dedication and hard work in an extremely challenging year. So congratulations once again. We're extremely proud. Um, enjoy the night and uh, enjoy your holiday. We look forward to seeing you when you return. We miss you. We're very proud of you and can't wait for a celebration uh, when you return. Cheers. Cheers, darling. Have Bye. fun. Love you. Well, um, yeah, firstly, just want to congratulate all the award winners tonight on uh, such a tremendous season. Uh, it truly really is an honour to be standing here. Um, yeah, I guess it's an honour to, to wear the red and blue each week. It's such a you know, club that's got so much history. Um, you know, along the way of my journey, there's been so many people who've, who've supported me and shaped me into the person I am today. Um, firstly, I want to thank my family. Um, obviously, I know they'll be tuning in and watching this and watching themselves. So, 
Um, I just want to thank them, you know, ever since I was a kid to now, um, I wouldn't be standing where I am for you guys, so thank you for the support. Um, to my amazing girlfriend, Bella, uh, you know, the support you've given me this year has been amazing uh, ever since we first met to now. Um, you know, you continue, continually challenge me to be the best version of myself, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, to the players and my teammates, uh, thank you. Thank you for accepting my personality. Sometimes I do get a bit annoying, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, you guys create such a, a loving, uh, energetic environment, and I really thrive off of you guys being there for me, and um, yeah, especially not just this year, but the last six years. You know, the advice and guidance you guys have given me has been, uh, has been immense. Um, to, the, to the coaches, to Goody, um, to Benny, um, you guys have been amazing for me, not just on, on the field, but also off the field in, in making me a better person, and I really appreciate that. Um, to, to the high performance team, to Burjo, um, to Phil, thank you. Burjo for what you've done for me this year has been um, incredible. Um, the weeks, the chats we have each week, um, you know, don't, don't really go under notice and I really appreciate what you've done for me. Um, and just to the, lastly, just to the staff, uh, to the physios, to Mel, to Frosty, um, to Jake and all the people behind the scenes, um, your work doesn't go unnoticed and I, I really appreciate what you've done for us as a playing group, so thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all be upstanding. I think uh, Track's effort this year deserves a uh, toast. So if you could all be upstanding with your champagne. To Christian Petrarca, cheers. Cheers, mate. So well done to all the, uh, well done to all the winners here. Rounding out the top ten, I think we might have it up on the screen, just Maxi Gorn at uh, sixth. Christian Salem at uh, seven, Gussie Brayshaw at eight, Michael Hibbert at nine, and Sam Wiedemann at ten. So that was the top ten. Congratulations to all those players. Very quickly to wrap it up now, to the supporters and members that have tuned in and watched tonight, hopefully you've enjoyed it and felt part of it. Keep on supporting the club and stay loyal. And to everyone in the room here, um, it's been a tough old 11 weeks. We've got through it together. Again, a big thank you to everyone and hopefully uh, you enjoy the night. So thanks again and go Dees.